Okay. I've seen so many coffees with Ola, <laughs> so now I'm finally sitting here. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Let me take I, I really like this format because you know I I I, I like this this talking to each other. You yes. know, it's not a regular interview no. like oh question one, <laughs> you, question you know, two. It's I did try having an interview over Zoom, like during the pandemic, and I just can't. It's not the same. No, it's not. It's not. It was terrible. Like uh, it's. There's the latency, so there's no like no natural yeah. communication. It's unnatural. Yeah. So uh, I did try it twice, and I was like, I'm never gonna do this again. I want to have the guy in it's, my room. It's right the here. right decision. And uh, it's just otherwise it becomes too much of a of a press interview. You know, it's and it should not be like no, that. Exactly. I, agree. I, I I like it more when I because I'm not an interview. I'm not an interviewer. I'm like I'm terrible. I'm but I'm still interested in guitars, and hopefully the people that I bring in. Like uh, music, and we share, yes. you know, the like, love for guitars and uh, and the music. Yeah, and that that's all. That's it, that's, right there. And that's like to impromptu that uh, <laughs> how you start an interview, right there. Yes. And uh, I mean, if you ever feel like you want to backtrack on anything, like just let me know. It's easier to edit in video, yeah. and this is all about having a good time. I'm not gonna push any weird boundaries to limits or anything like that. Oh, good. This is all about just fucking chilling and sit back. And enjoy water with Ola. Water with Ola. <laughs> I already had a coffee. I already so had five he's, today. He's, 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 he's not talking. Right, I'm going to do the sync lap mm -hmm. and now I'll introduce you. But this is probably still going to be in the video because, you know, that's, people love this shit. Like, just uh, what happens before it, or what happens this after. Water yes. with Ola happens. Exactly. <laughs> but I'll make the sync clap just to officially start the interview. What's up, everyone? And welcome to Coffee with Ola today with water yes. with Ola. And Marcus Siepen of Blind Guardian, welcome to my humble office. <laughs> it's not humble. How humble is this? <laughs> that, that, that's that's, that's self-indulgence, but I like it a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much. All these are empty, by the way. I, I heard about Except it. Except that I, one. I, I was asking how many are loaded, and he was yeah. like, one. It yeah. was like... <laughs> I mean, it's... It, when you're older, you just don't want to have... It's too loud. <laughs> you know, I, I, I remember when we toured Japan for the first time back in 92, we had a Marshall backdrop, backline mm -hmm. like that. We had like 30 Marshall cabinets. Real on cabinets. State. Real cabinets. Oh, they were all loaded. Damn. But we just connected one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. it's, it's, it's about, you know, visuals. Think about all the, those uh, humpers that need to carry all these real cabinets around. <laughs> True story. We had our crew with us, obviously, okay. but, uh, you know, <laughs> everything was set up when we came to the venue yeah. and you know the big wall of marshals and everything and so we played the show after the show we went backstage we were sitting there and within five minutes the the head of our crew came backstage covered in sweat and he was like everything's gone oh we were like what the hell are you talking oh, about oh yeah yeah and he was like it's gone and we were like what is gone <laughs> all the cabinets are gone we were like there were 30 yeah yeah but 30 japanese guys came and, <laughs> yep. and it was gone and we're like okay <laughs> well if there's efficiently like they they those guys know efficiency yeah, they do you, they, you come there you play a gig at like four o'clock sometimes <laughs> six it was six but it was like it was such an absurd thing you know um obviously we were used to playing at like 10 at night yes, or something yes. and then oh here it's it's six o'clock there were no support yep, bands yep. and it was like at a quarter to six there was an alarm going off yes. in the backstage. And we're like, fire. Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's just six o'clock, you go on stage. We're like, okay. <laughs> we were not ready because yeah. we were not the most punctual time back right, then. Right. And so we're like, oh, make it five past six. And they're like, no, six o'clock. Yeah. Otherwise we cancel the tour. We're like, okay, we're, we're in time, we're going. <laughs> <laughs> they're serious, you know? They are very serious. But that's the cool thing. What I like about playing in Japan is that because you're playing so early, you have all the evening afterwards to actually have dinner at, you know, yep. a correct time. Yep. And also, you know, go to bed early. Because otherwise, when you're playing at 10, you're like, you know, you have adrenaline up until, you're up until yeah, 2 a.m. The usual thing. Yes. Yeah, but uh, we didn't go to bed. when we had lots of adrenaline. And, uh, uh, of course, yeah, of course. Uh, and it's <laughs> also in Japan and Tokyo. It's yeah. so much to do. You know? Oh, yes. So, uh, yeah, welcome. Holy shit, we derailed for a while. That's fine. And uh, <laughs> you're here playing in Stockholm right now, and you're still doing the uh, uh, an album tour, sort of, for the, this yes. 2020... 20, 22nd year yes. album. Yes. And the uh, machine. yes, exactly. And uh, but it's just like the are you working on anything new? I mean 2022 we, is 2 years ago. Yeah, but no, we we didn't. I mean we started touring 
uh, early 22, yeah. even before the album came out. Yeah. We, we did festivals, festival summer, and um, the, the actual God Machine tour only started rather late. Okay. So we, we started the real tour for the God Machine only in September last year. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. So we did festivals. We did an, an uh, anniversary tour for an old album of us, uh, uh, which was called Somewhere Far Beyond, um, that had a 30th anniversary, I mm -hmm. think. Yes. Whatever it was. So we played that album yeah. in a row. And, um, now we're on the God Machine tour, which will keep us on the road until the end of the year, I think. Okay. And only then we'll start working on, on new stuff, because the problem with us is if we would start writing now, mm -hmm. the new songs would sound like what we're playing in the moment, because that's what's stuck in our brain. Right. So what we usually do is we finish a tour, empty our heads and start fresh. Okay. Do you take like a, a short little break? As it, a band, it, it, it's it's yeah it's it's uh, it's like you take you don't do something for four weeks or something okay. and you pick up your instrument and see what happens right I mean obviously you can collect ideas riffs and, and licks and mm -hmm. whatever now but it's not that we're sitting down working on on it, actual songs yet exactly so you're kind of emptying like the bank yes so you go in with a completely fresh mind into yes. a new mindset I, I like that I'm you know I'm I like to always write riffs. But I think that's a problem in itself too, because exactly like you're saying, you write what in the moment you're in. Yes. And uh, that might not make for anything newer and interesting. That's the point. And you know, uh, y you need, to, or at least we need some time to, to, to finish the songs until everybody is happy. Yeah. You know, we can't rush a song in a day or something like this. I yeah. know there are people that can do this. They write a full song every day. I'm, I'm impressed. I yeah. can't do it. Yeah. And it's, it's like, yeah, I also play guitar every single day. There's right. not a single day where I don't pick up a guitar. You know, I have my studio room at home and I can't enter this room. Even if I just go there to pick up a pen because I want to take a note, I can't enter this room without picking up a guitar. Well, and playing a couple of chords and put it back on the wall. Right. And, but uh, I can't. It's, I have to pick up the guitar. Right. How do you work then when you... Uh, I'm always interested in this hearing because uh, I'm so much into band dynamics and mm -hmm. like how do other bands write music together because in my sense okay i have my feared band which is me i write everything i have old england write everything chug project write everything then i have the haunted mm -hmm. which becomes a challenge for me yes i can imagine suddenly write... you're not the only guy exactly and suddenly when someone's like oh we let you do this instead i'm like hey hey man, that's my hey, riff man, <laughs> that's my riff but okay like so it, for me that's a challenge but i i let it happen because i know it's probably very good for me uh so how do you guys write we obviously in the early days and in the very early days we were jamming in the rehearsal room yes. like most like other people would do. Yeah. yes but what we did very early on is uh we invested pretty much everything that we earned with the first two albums into mm -hmm. studio equipment back mm, then. So okay. we bought four stakes 16 track, then we Smart. upgraded to a 24 track and blah blah. So we used uh, studio equipment for our songwriting pretty early on and like this we developed this what turned out to be the Blind Guardian style with all the, the vocal right. layers and the guitar layers and because everything. Because you had the tools to experiment. Exactly, because you can't, you know, if we want to jam on something like this in the rehearsal room, there's just Andre and me with two guitars. Yeah. So that's all you can play. Yes. With with tape machines like that or now with, with any, if, whether it's Pro Tools or yeah. Studio One or whatever, you can try anything. Yes. So that's basically how we work today. So everybody has his studio set up at home. Mm -hmm. Hansi usually goes to our main studio to, to work there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you work on your ideas. Mm -hmm. And if you have a certain length of music, um, then uh, you have to pass it to Hansi because obviously he has to sing to it. Yes. And the greatest riff in the universe is useless if uh, you can't sing to it, right? And that's a learning process yes. because you know you obviously guitar players uh, come up with freaky things, and we they we overwrite think, the riff. Yes, yes. That's that's the typical. So do you feel often that you have to hold back? Okay, yes. this is going to be a verse, so maybe don't do all of this. I have to uh, kind of it, scale it down. Yes, you you ha it's you know sometimes I when I work on a riff I, I might add you know already guitar melodies on top of that, yep. but obviously the more I add the the less space is there for vocals or anything else, so you have to right. take a step back and maybe let him do vocals first, and then you can see how you can play around the vocals. Yes. And 
if there are gaps that should be filled or maybe there are gaps that you should leave. Yes, you know? or completely like remove yeah. even. And that's that's a learning process. And it's, it's, a, it's a thing that you should keep in mind. Yes, I would imagine it being pretty tough in a band like Blind Guardian where there is a lot of things happening. And you know, there's a lot of elements that you know, yep. want to keep for But at the end of the day, you know, the vocals are what's carrying the song. It is. So. Uh, you know, it, it, in the end, you have to 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 focus on the the final song. Yes, is what matters. It's not your riff. It's not your lead or song. Well, in my or, sense, or, it's it's my riff that matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no. you, yeah, but uh, yeah. So, so there's a lot of. You, do you get the feeling that you have to kill your darlings a lot? Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, not always, but sometimes that happens. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. I guess that's the, the tragic fate of any musician in a band. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if, you, if you're working together with people, this, is, this has to happen a lot. It has Otherwise, to it's not gonna, never going to work. No, I mean, if, if you're doing a solo thing, if, yeah. if you're, you know, if you're doing Fear, you mm -hmm. can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. if, if Ingrid Malmsteen is Absolutely. working on an album, he, you know, he calls the shots and yeah. he does whatever he wants. Yeah. But that's not a reg regular band situation. No, that's also something I, I don't like with the way that I write my music, you know, when I'm doing my for my own shit, for instance, is that uh, the problem is I'm not getting challenged by anyone. True. So and no one is going to tell me like, oh, maybe you should switch this up or mm -hmm. whatever. So you don't really have that that uh, counterpart. That it, hel you it helps you grow. It does. And in my opinion, a lot of the best songs I've written are something I work together with someone yeah, because I, I got imagine. their dynamics into the song or yeah. vice versa, you know, or and uh, that's the best songs with the Haunted, for instance, are the songs that we all work together on, in my opinion, yeah. uh, because they all have ev each and everyone's element in it. Yep. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I would imagine like Blind Guarding has so many elements in it. I mean, yes. Haunted have just <laughs> bass, guitar, drums, vocals. You know, but there's there's the strength. In, the, in theory, it's the same for us, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, there's there's a lot, there's a lot to uh, to fit in a mix too. Yep. And uh, I would imagine if you guys already started very early with your studio stuff, that you've probably learned very quick how to kind of separate things. Being a self-independent musician today, knowing how to record yourself is probably number one. Yes. Like on how to get going at yes. least, and you know, marketing and all that that comes later. But how to record yourself properly and make yourself sound good and your song sound serve your song is uh, probably the most important because people hear it immediately. So hearing that you guys bought studio equipment back in the day, yep. uh, that, that makes a lot of sense. The good thing for us back in the day was, I mean, we had this, you know, the studio, the first studio that we built was our rehearsal room and yes. we put up stuff, oh, of course. So the usual thing. So we were messing with all those things, learning. But the good thing is we were still doing um, our albums in proper studios. So we had proper right. producers mm -hmm. and we could learn from them. Exactly. So, you know, we, we started with, with Kalle Trapp. We did the first four albums with him. Then we switched to Fleming Rasmussen and yes. Sweet Silence. Yep. So yep. We, we learned so much in all those years. The problem that I see now is obviously all you need is a a laptop or something, mm -hmm. uh, you know, DAW and, you know, an amp, a guitar, whatever. You don't even need an amp, you can use a plug-in. Yep. The problem is um, you can all do, do all this, but you don't necessarily know how to do it no. and to make it proper, you know. And that's a learning process. For, for example, I think uh, a problem that many guitar players have, they dial in the sound on their own, without band context or anything. Mm -hmm. So they might add way too much distortion, mm -hmm. they might add too much low end or whatever, mm -hmm. and they think, oh, it shocks, it yeah. sounds great. In their mix, it doesn't work. Yeah. And if you if you listen to stems from great sounding albums yeah. and you just hear the, the individual guitar track and you go like, that's, that's the pretty sound. Thin. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty thin, exactly. But you know, if you stack it then and you do quad tracking yeah. or whatever, then suddenly it's not that thin after all. Mm -hmm. So that's also a learning process. I think also a problem with today is that since a lot of people maybe don't know how to create their own sound, they're using presets. Yeah. And then a lot of guitar players start to sound the same. Yes. And uh, I mean, if you go back and listen to like 80s and 90s album, all of them in terms of production sounded different yeah. from each other. And you know, the more into 2000s we got, 
You know, everyone started using tube screamers into a rectifier, and, and you know, the same sound kind of, everyone yep. kind of had the same sound a little bit. And yep. at this point, if you go and watch a subgenre, there's not that often uh, that they, like, two bands can sound completely different, even though they're playing sort of like the same music. They always, not always, okay, I'm generalizing, but it's very common that they sound the same, basically. Yep, I from agree. drums, from bass to guitar. Yep. It's like a study that, okay, it's that basically, works. it's hi-fi, yep. loudness. You know, the, the, what happened to pop, basically? You know, it became one thing where, okay, it's about to serve a radio station. Sometimes in the metal, we've, we're in that in the metal aspect as well. Some bands sound like, you know, it's made for radio. Yep. I'm just glad that this loudness war thing is yeah. behind us because that was insane. <laughs> yes. You know, there are some albums and I, I still love the songs, but I went and put on that album. I was like, what the fuck were they yeah. thinking in the production? Yeah. Everything is distorting. Everything is mm -hmm. clipping, mm -hmm. but it's loud. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes, exactly. Great. <laughs> yeah, but th that's also weird because if you ask, if you send someone a clip of, you know, two clips, one is slightly louder, they will like the louder one. Yeah. It's a mental thing. It's it's it's, 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 it's stupid. Yeah. It's definitely. Let's. Uh, you're an amplifier connoisseur, I would say. You, well, you're a big fan of Mesa amplifiers. Yes. Uh, are you still using amplifiers, or are you, uh, have you made so, the, have you made the step? I have made the step a long time ago. <laughs> so I, um, I've been a Mesa guy for many many years. Yeah. I uh, I've been playing triple rectifiers, and I still have mine. Mm -hmm. So I I have my first one was uh, Rev F. One yes. that I bought in the early 90s, and this amp is mind blowing. Yeah. And then I uh, I had all kinds of Mesas. I had this 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 uh, rack recording. Yeah, the recording rack rectifier. I yeah. had a mini rectifier. I still have uh, one of those multi wet amp yep. rectos. Three channels. I had uh, the tri axis with the 290 yep. uh, thing. Same. And they all sound insane. Yep. And uh, the problem is their weight is also insane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, I think I made the step around the, what was it, 2010, 2011, I switched to an Axe FX mm -hmm. back then. Because um, obviously, uh, you know, when we did flight shows, uh, yeah. you know, you, it was one rack that I had to fly and I had my sounds in there. And, you know, Mesa was providing amps for me whenever we were flying, so yeah. whether it was Japan, the States, or Australia, or and wherever. Truth, truth be told, like, they, they usually do exist, like, in backlines, almost they, all over the world. True. But, you know, they never sound like your amp. No. Um, and, and, and that's the point. Yeah. With, with the digital units, you know, once you program your sound, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter where you are, you know, it doesn't matter what temperature there is or how humid it is or whatever, you switch it on and you have your sound instant. Yep. So I was, I was on an XFX until, basically until the Quad Cortex came out mm -hmm. and uh, I completely switched to that one. Now I have three of them. So normally one is at home in my studio and I have two on the road. Yep. And uh, I love the unit. I mean, it's so small, yep. it's so fucking powerful. It doesn't weigh anything. It's like, what is it, 1.8 kilos or no, something? No, it's not much, no. So I have, uh, when we're flying, I have a small pedal board that has a quad cortex. It has my wireless system. Mm. It has a tuner that I don't even need, but yeah, I, there's a small tuner that the display is always on. Yeah. So while playing, I can see, yeah. visually confirm yes. that my tuning is fine. I mean, with the Evertune Bridge, I don't have to worry about this, but it, right. it's... I left it on the board, so yeah. it, you know it's not eating up space or weight or anything. So it's a super simple setup, yeah. and I love the sound. I mean, you can capture your own amps if if you have an amp that you really love. You can load it in there. You mm -hmm. know, you can load external IRs. You can capture your own IRs. You can do whatever. Mm -hmm. So is that your sound? Have you captured your amp, or did you just use the dual rectifier that's in there? Uh, I, I didn't even use the rectifier. I mean, it, it, in the moment, what I'm using, the preset is based on a, on a Marshall, on a Silver Jubilee, mm -hmm. and I'm using the model that was in there. But I, um, it was simply because we went for, for a more Marshall kind of approach mm -hmm. for the last album. So yep. obviously, that's what we're playing live. Uh, I still want to capture all my amps, yeah. so uh, I want. To, I didn't have the time yet because we were on the road since all the time. But um, I want to bring all my amp heads 
and and capture them. I also I'm a big fan of the of the synergy module yes, thing. Yes. So I'm I'm collecting all the great ones there that I also still want to capture. That's actually my uh, quad cortex preset. It's a captured synergy yeah. angle power ball. Yeah. So just a preamp basically. Yeah. And it, that stuff sounds insane. Yeah, it does. It, it does. It's like when when they when they sent me the first units, um, one of the first modules that I bought was the Soldano. Mm -hmm. And we have a Soldano head yep. in the studio that we used. We bought it in '94, I think. We used it for for the Imaginations album. And Charlie, our producer, and me, we we compared it mm -hmm. back to back. You know that original head from the '90s yep. to my module. The module smokes the amp. You know, it's insane. That's not what people want to hear. <laughs> but it's the truth. I mean, it, the, the, the thing is, um, I'm very pragmatic about those things. You know, that's all tools for me. Yeah. I, I don't care if if it's a, a vintage tube amp mm. or if it's a plug-in or if it's a digital modeler, capturer or whatever it is, mm -hmm. as long as I can plug in and get my sound, the sound that I'm hearing in my head, if yep. this thing delivers that sound, fine, I'll plug it to your coffee machine if it yes, sounds right. Exactly. I, I don't care at all. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm very simple. If it gives me my sound and on top of it is even small and lightweight, so ideal for traveling, I mean, yep. That's, I'm, I'm very simple about that. So th that's actually quite interesting because uh, the first time we met, this at was Wacken. at Wacken, exactly, with the Haunted. Uh, you were headlining the stage. Yes. And we opened the stage, I think. Yeah, we were, you, you came when we were finishing <laughs> yes, the sound check exactly, and you came to the, the setup. The last band sound checks in the AM, right? Yeah. So, um, and that was the first time we met. And, uh, but it wasn't the first time you, you seen and tried every tune, was it? I, I, the Evertune I didn't have back then. No. The Evertune is actually something that my first Evertune bridge was on a solar guitar. Right. When we launched the brand, you were very early to get to, like the blue one. Yes, exactly. I was. That was a time I read about the Evertune bridge, and it sounded super interesting, mm. obviously. Mm. But um, I wanted to try it, but I was scared, yep. you know, because. I never played one, yeah. so I, I I didn't like the idea of cutting out a huge chunk of wood out of one of my Les Pauls right. or anything and not liking it in yeah, the end. Yeah, no, exactly. So, and that was around the time when you launched Solar Guitars. Yes. And, uh, you know, I, I, I remember when you announced this on your channel, I was like, that's a brave step because obviously there's, it's a very saturated market. Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously I got the idea, you know, building mm -hmm. your own guitars. Yep. I mean, perfect. Yep. So, and I was curious about how that would turn out. And then when you introduced the first models, I saw that blue one the, yep. with the quilted maple top thing yes. and, and it had the Evertune bridge. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I think I need that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hmm. So I bought it and it became my main guitar immediately. Yeah. I, I just, you know, a bit, a bit, there's there's something about buying a guitar that you never had in your hands because yes. you know don't know how it would feel but yeah. it, it just felt perfect yeah. you know I love the shape of the neck which is very important mm -hmm. for me because I mean that's where you're working yeah on. I love the weight I love the sound I love the looks but okay going back to the Evertune yeah because how fast did you click with the Evertune because this is not a fast process it wasn't for me it wasn't for me either it it I love the way. It stayed in tune, yeah. obviously, but bending strings yeah. is different. Yeah. It feels like, I'm, obviously I'm setting it up so I can yes. do bends, yes. but it feels slightly different. And mm -hmm. there are a couple of songs that I prefer playing on non-Evertune yeah. guitars, yeah. simply for that, because yeah. it feels slightly different. But in general, I adapted rather quickly because I just saw the benefits. Yes, You know, exactly. I mean, in the studio, when, when I first brought that guitar into the studio and you know I had many guitars there because you know one sound option I had a couple of Les yeah. Pauls I had I had a Strat and whatnot and I had that one and uh, so our producer was like what's what's that thing I was like that's an Evertune bridge and it does this and this and that and he didn't know it and he was like okay take that guitar mm -hmm. so I took it and he was play something and he was like it's it's really super well intonated and yes. everything. And then now hit the strings really hard. Mm -hmm. So I did. 
now do this and now do it up the neck okay. and now do this. <laughs> and he was like, what's that called? And so he looked it up and yeah. he was like, can this, did the guitar come like this? Say, yes, solar guitars come <laughs> like this. And I have to make a phone call. I have to tell a couple of people to get this guitar. <laughs> right. I, I mean, that's, that's the thing. Like, I don't think it clicks for a lot of people until they see and understand yep. that like in a studio, or even like playing live. It's priceless. It's just priceless. But it's most people, they don't play in a studio. They don't play live. So a lot of people are like, ah, well, it's just another bridge. But for like a touring and recording musician, like it's, you and me, that are I'm playing and recording every day. Yep. And I go to my office, put on the guitar, I riff immediately and record. What I did with that guitar, I wanted to see how long it stays in tune. So yes. when I got it, I put on my strings. Mm -hmm set it up, intonated it, tuned it. And I think I played it for, I didn't change the strings. We were not on tour at that point, so mm -hmm. I could do this experiment. I think I didn't change the strings for seven months. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to retune it once, yeah. not at all. And I was playing it every day. Yeah. And um, th that sold me. So one thing that can change the tuning. Okay, this is something I've learned because Mechanically wise, it's not it's not going to change the tuning. Mm -hmm. But if the string changes weight, mm -hmm. meaning if you're like putting a lot of finger uh, shit on the strings, if you do it for a long time, it could okay. make the tension different. Okay. But wash your hands. Wash your hands, man. <laughs> Don't be <laughs> there disgusting. You have it. <laughs> no, but uh, like like some people have more. But you know, then you have to you haven't changed strings for a year or something like that. I mean, on tour, I normally you know, I used to change strings after every single gig. Okay. Yep. And and now I think we are we're like how often does Willem change strings? I think every third gig at least. That sounds so. that sounds like what we would do. And <laughs> yeah, and you know, there is no tuning issues yeah. at all. And and the great thing is, I mean, obviously there are tricky situations, you know, if you if you're playing open air festivals and it's cold outside yep. and you know, you run into problems. I remember we played the Rock Hard Festival in Gelsenkirchen a couple of years ago. It was 2016 or 11 or whenever it was, but it was on that night we were headlining and it was 9 degrees. Yeah. It was a nightmare. Yeah. I mean, obviously you could move your fingers yeah. and and uh, my tech tuned the guitar, gave it to me. I was put, putting it on and the heat from my body yeah. detuned it immediately. Oh, wow. So I had to change guitars after every single song. Yeah. And before we reached the end of the song, the guitar was out of tune. Yeah. It was a nightmare, but yeah. you know, uh, the Evertune bridge. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the problem is that when you play Evertune in a band where the others are not using Evertune, then it can, it can, can be a problem. It can be a problem, <laughs> yes. But you know, I'm very egoistic. I'm playing Ever yeah. Tune. <laughs> no. no, but it's like I said with, uh, for instance, for Devin, for, like uh, when I see him play live, and I saw him before he was using Ever Tune, and when he's using Ever Tune, it sounds so much better. It does. Like it's it elevates everything it because does. everyone is in tune at all times. Yeah. And uh, I know how many shows there have been, and I've heard where it's like just the slight offset of tuning between two guitars. It just throws you off completely. It does. And uh, it has to be like the guitar tech's dream, basically. It is. I mean, the, the nice thing is um, I normally don't break strings, but, you know, from time to time, I just feel like swapping guitars, mm -hmm. you know, just because I love guitars. Mm -hmm. So uh, normally when we when you do uh, full production runs, I have a vault that fits 10 guitars. So right. I bring 10 guitars, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the nice thing is with those models, my tech can just grab the guitar and give it to me and yeah. he knows and I know we're good to go. Yeah. Exactly. Because you know, he obviously before we go on stage he checks, he checks everything, everything but everything is fine and so he can just you want that one? Okay, here you go. That's cool. So do, do you work with different tunings like no. a lot or is it like It's uh, we w everything in Blind Guardian is tuned a half step down so we're on E flat, e flat. unless we have a couple of seven string songs that are B flat then. Okay. Uh, but we, we never messed with, with any open tunings or we don't even do drop, drop tunings. Um, That's so, smart. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's something I notice as soon as you start doing other tunings. It's like, okay, you need to bring an extra guitar or you need to do this, this or this. That's the thing. I mean, you, knew, you need on tour, you need for any tuning that you're going to use, yeah. you need two guitars. You need one main exactly. one and a backup. Because if you blow a string, you know, you can't say, oh, sorry, guys, we come mm. back in 10 minutes, you know, mm. it's not going to work. You need no. a backup. Yeah. 
And if you then work with four or five different tunings, then you need to bring a lot of gear. Yeah. And uh, I like that. I like bringing gear, but <laughs> our tour manager doesn't like it because it costs a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. But if you downsize on the amplifier side, you can bring more guitars. True. Let me, uh, I have to take notes. I have to tell <laughs> so, somebody. Uh, this guitar right here, uh, I'm not even sure it's okay for us to talk about it. Let's do this. If it's if it's not, we'll just edit it out. But uh, <laughs> uh, what is this guitar? Can you take it out so we can I see? I can. So uh, this um, looks it, it looks a little similar, I must say, to this blue guitar. It it does. It kind of does. Yeah. It is obviously, as you can see on this logo, it's a solar guitar. Whatever camera is better. Um, this is the guitar that I had in my mind, um, mm -hmm. and I remember was it one and a half years ago, yep. whenever. Um, I sent you guys an email saying that I uh, wanted to buy a guitar that you unfortunately had not built yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I described what I had in mind and obviously it is, it is based on the S1.6 series because yep. all my solos are from that series. I just love this guitar because yep. it feels perfectly right. And I just wanted to have a couple of things that I thought would look nice. Yep. And then, I don't remember if it was you or Greg, but one of you guys sent back that, yeah, we can build you that guitar, but we would like to put out this guitar as your artist model. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, we don't do custom guitars yeah. for people. So if you want a custom guitar, you have to be an artist. So please, Here be an artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, um, well, this is, as I was saying, this is, is kind of an S1.6 yep. model. It has a couple of tweaks. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, this, this green burst finish was not available before, and I fell in love with it. The That's new, exactly, for yeah. solar guitars, uh, exactly. Uh, the original idea was like, I wasn't sure about if I wanted gold hardware or mm -hmm. black hardware. And Xavier did two mock-ups, and the first one I've seen was with the black one, yep. and it looked sick, yep. really looked nice yep. and menacing, and then I saw this one. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, let's stick to gold. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sucker for gold too, yeah, it looks it so is. good. You know, they, they, people call it dad guitar, but you oh. know, I'm a dad. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. It's just, You're right. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's just, it, it just looks beautiful. Yeah, and, yeah, it looks great. I, another thing I wanted, obviously, it, it's, it's locking tuners, mm -hmm. which I really like because changing strings is, is very easy. Yep. Uh, Evertune Bridge, we just talked about yep. it. I needed that one. Fishman Fluence Modern Pickups. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an active pickup guy. Yep. I just like them a lot. Uh, so were you using EMGs back in the day or? I started on EMGs yep. back in the 80s already, okay. and um, I stuck to EMGs. It was 281s for me always. Yep. Okay. Um, and I started experimenting when the Fishmans came out. I tried them and I liked them mm -hmm. too. I started experimenting with passives as well, and Simmer Duncan has a couple of ones that I yep. really like. Uh, I love the Nut School Sentient set in my seven strings. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Duncan Solas actually uh, in that baritone one that I bought two, yep. years, two weeks ago, they sound insane, okay. in, in, especially <laughs> in that tuning, I yeah. love them. Yep. But yeah, this is um, the Fishman's and they have two voicings and normally you would activate the second voicing by pulling up yes. on this thing and I don't like push-pull pots because on right. stage, sweaty fingers and yep. messing with that, so I don't like this. So the wiring is different here, so uh, in that position, first position, this is voicing one if you go to the second one this is voicing two aha uh -huh. so this is both pickups in voicing one okay voicing two for the neck voicing one for the neck ah uh, okay and that is for me the most convenient way of mm -hmm. accessing something like so that. you are using both voicings then sometimes yes. okay um, uh, voice on, on those pickups voice one is definitely my main voice okay mm -hmm. But especially for clean sounds, I sometimes mm. switch to the, uh, yeah. to, to the second voicing. Or, for example, in the blue one, yep. in my first solar, I uh, put in the the Devin Townsend set. Right. And there, I'm using the clean, the, the not the clean, the the single coil sound yes. that is in there. Right. So sometimes for for clean sounds. Yeah. So basically, the main voicing would be fine for me. But obviously, if you have options, yeah, you might as well use them. Absolutely. No, I always, all the, the guitars I have with Fishman's have the push-pull pot pulled. 
because I'm a fan of the second voicing, but you always see it. You always see it on all my Fishman guitars. Like it's always a pulled pot. Yeah, <laughs> you know whatever sounds right for you. Yeah. And the other main thing uh, that I wanted on this guitar, and it actually turned out much nicer than I ever dreamed about, is I wanted binding on the body, the neck, and the headstock. Yeah, natural binding. What I had in mind was the normal kind of what is that plastic i don't know oh yeah yeah just the, uh, the regular white yeah mm -hmm. whatever and and then so we planned it like this and at some point xavier sent me a picture of this this maple whatever yep. it is binding and he was like what do you think about this we can do this as well and i was like i don't know most likely it looks great <laughs> it, it, i was like yes if you can, <laughs> if you can do this please yeah go for that and uh, yeah, that's that's a dream come true. Uh, I got this. That's the prototype. I've been using that for a year now. Mm -hmm. I got it like uh, shortly before we went to Brazil last year to do the Summer Breeze Brazil Festival. Uh, that's my main guitar. You know, as you yeah. can see, there's a number one on there. So I see <laughs> my my tech Willem put it on there. So so he knows. That's the I mean, every, everyone knows. Yeah, it, so cool. It, it's it's exactly what I hoped it would be and more it's it's just oh but, yeah and 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 there's there's a little self-indulgence there's a little blind guardian dragon yes. logo on the on the trust rod cover yeah. but i didn't you know uh, some people were asking me why i didn't put it big in in here on the 12th fret or anything there are two reasons uh first of all i wanted this to be a beautiful guitar for mm. also people that might not like blind guardian if yes. there are people right yeah. You know, but so uh, if you if you love this guitar but you don't like my band, change the cover. Yes, you have a beautiful guitar. Absolutely. And I wanted the Solar logo to be there, where it always is, because this is a Solar guitar, and I wanted it to look like a Solar guitar. You know, why, yeah. why hide what it is? Yes, and that's I'm a proud Solar artist, and and I have to say, like s since you and I have like stayed in touch since the beginning of Solar guitars, I must say that I'm. I'm super proud and very happy that we're finally doing this, you know. I'm happy. And uh, so uh, I just want to say thank you. I thank truly you. appreciate you and everything you've done for Solar Guitars because I, you've, you've always been praising us on the Instagrams and all that. And I'm just, it's, uh, you're a real trooper. And uh, that, that's something I'm always remembering and, and uh, something I really cherish. It's, it's a pleasure for me. And, and the thing is, if I would not be convinced about the guitars, I wouldn't be doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, I would have not become a solar artist if yep. I wouldn't want, you know, it's not, you know, it's not that you said, oh, you get 10 guitars for free. I right. Wouldn't. And I'm, I'm not asking for that. I'm playing those guitars because I think they are great. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, the, the last thing I have, that's a stupid thing to say from a, for a guitar player. And, but it's true. The last thing I need is another guitar. Yeah. The first thing I want is another guitar. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I think, as I was saying, especially this S1.6 range is just made for me. Yeah. So without asking me, you made the right guitar from, from the start. Amazing. That makes me so happy to hear. It is. You know, and and, and the, the funny thing is, I mean, obviously you have other other shapes as well. Yep. And, you know, um, then when you when you put out the first uh, Les Paul type, G, yep. G type, the G -type. it's called, I was like, oh, that's a beautiful guitar as well. But then in the back of my mind, I was like, you have 15 Les Pauls. <laughs> so, yes. you know, some, somehow this is my solar shape. Yeah. I'm sure we'll get I see it as well. But, you know, it, it just, it, it, it feels super comfortable. It, it looks great. I must say, it turned out really good. Man, when I, when I saw, when Xavier sent me the pictures of that, when this prototype was done, I was like, can you please send me that guitar <laughs> now? <laughs> I need to take some, take some pictures first. Is it after that? Can you please send me that guitar? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. All right. Enough of the solar guitars. Yeah. Love. I. I mean, uh, I love it obviously, but you know, the, the, I, I just don't. You know. The humbleness, we have to keep it down, you know, you know, this makes me very humble. But uh, I actually have a couple of uh, extra questions that are not regarding music. Uh, you know, we all know that like Blind Guardian and all that is a lot of like fantasy inspired and, you know, Lord of the Rings and all that. But you're also a comic book uh, fan. Uh, has this always been a thing like since you were young or? Yeah. Uh, I started reading comics as a kid, you know, Batman and Superman, mm -hmm. the usual things back then, Prince Valiant. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, I loved it. Mm. You know, it was you know the adventure stories and you know Batman as the Dark Knight. And right. Everything. It's it's appealing to kids. Yes. And I, I never lost this. You know, internally I never grew up. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't collect them mm. back then. I bought them. I read mm. them. But I, I don't have the ones that I had back then. Yeah. But at some point, my wife is also into comics, and you know, we we started collecting them again. Oh, at okay. Some point, so we have big collection. Wow, lucky man. Oh yeah. <laughs> I I, for example, as I was saying, I was reading the Prince Valiant comics back in the day, and in in the local comic shop in in Krefeld, they had a hardcover collected edition, you know, with like yes, this, yep, this, this yep. Had all the collected Prince Valiant editions. Yeah, right. It was fucking expensive, but I was like, I need to buy this. <laughs> took it home and I was going through his through this and I immediately recognized the panels I was like oh yeah this is going right. to happen and uh, it's so nice and a nice thing that we do on tour now is uh, because there are a couple of comic book nerds in the crew as well mm -hmm. and um, on day also also when we have time on show days we we check if there's a local comic book yes. store and uh, yesterday I did some shopping in Gothenburg. Yep. And I have this science, science fiction books. There's one in Stockholm too. I, I know, but uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, today I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good choice. But yeah, I, I did some shopping yesterday. And uh, the good thing is now we're on a bus, so mm. I can, you know, extra weight is not a problem. But yep. I remember I once did a, a comic book tour in, uh, in Canada, I think it was. And. Uh, it was a, an amazing shop. You yeah, know, they had everything. And back then, I was starting to collect the, the Sandman comics. By oh yeah, so yeah. I, I think I had the first two or three issues, and there I bought all the others. Okay. So I was coming back to the venue like <laughs> I some extra weight. Sorry. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, it, it's a beautiful thing. You know, yeah. it's, it's literature. It's great stories. It's fantastic art. Yeah, it's just something very nice to collect. It's a really good escape, in my opinion. Like books is one books one thing, you know, imagination and reading. Yep. But uh, I'm a big fan of man manga, for instance. So you know, it's a it's a visual escape, I would it say. Is. That's not this. It is. You know. Yeah. So it is really relaxing in that sense. But you're also doing like some video games too. I see that you. Mm -hmm. Like how what how do you occupy yourself on a tour when you're flying for 14 hours straight? And uh, yeah. do you have like a do you play on your phone or do you have uh, a switch or? Do you... I have some games on my phone, but I normally don't play them much. I have a snooker game on my phone. That's basically okay. the only. Oh, and I also have a, a Professor Layton game on on my phone. Okay, I don't know that. Uh, that's that's a Nintendo game the way you do those little riddles in. Okay, okay. Uh, it's it's fun. Okay. But uh, I have a Switch, mm -hmm. so that's that's price. I used to carry uh, uh, a gaming laptop with me mm -hmm. uh, for many many years. Andre and me are the and Frederick as well are the big gamers. And yep. Andre and me were the ones with the super heavy gaming laptops, yep. like Alienware or whatever. Right, right. The problem is, you know, uh, I remember the. I had an alien where there was the laptop itself was like seven kilos. Yeah. And that was without the power supply. Yeah. And then you were flying, and they said your hand luggage can be six kilos. Yes, exactly. But my laptop. Yeah. So, at some point, I I just took the switch. Yeah. But I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of games on there, and it, it's just perfect because you know you can play on the bus. Yeah. In handheld mode, yep. you can play on a on a plane. Mm -hmm. You can play in a backstage, but on a day off. You know, you bring your dog, and yep. uh, every hotel room has this yes, this big TV, giant TV sets. You hook it up there. You can you can play there. Yeah, it's just I love the Switch. Yeah, and then that that's fine for me. But yeah, gaming is a big thing. You know, we, especially since uh, most people in the most of the gaming people in in the in the, in the crew and in the band uh, we all have switches and then we do mario kart competitions right, and stuff right. like that so it's it's a very nice way you know if you're sitting at an airport and waiting for boarding or anything like yeah what about mario kart yep yeah <laughs> that's a cool uh, have you tried to uh, I, I can show you later uh, but uh, so my new thing is the backbone do you know what that is no you put it on your iphone I read about it. Yes. It, it turns the iPhone into... It's basically of, like a licensed PlayStation controller you put on okay. your iPhone because the iPhone games are getting... I mean, they're better and better, at mm. least. And you know, I mean, it's not perfect, but the, there are some games you can play yep. uh, that are just perfect. So it's just one less thing that you need to bring. You just bring that thing and put it on your already existing phone. Because exactly like you said, 
I also took a laptop with me and you know, okay, it's a PC, but I also need to have my working computer, which is a Mac. So I have to bring two. And it's like, at some point it's like, ugh. The, the, the know, problem it's... is I, 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 last year, whenever it was, I bought a new laptop and I bought a, a, a MacBook mm -hmm. because I thought like this, you don't start playing on no. it. Unfortunately, there are a couple of games. Diablo is I, available. For example, <laughs> you know, so uh, there are games on that MacBook as well. But, okay. Yeah, so. But yeah, I want to see that back. Before. Yes, I'll show it later. Marcus, thank you so much. An absolute pleasure. Uh, I'm going to go and watch the show later today yes. and uh, film you guys a yes. little bit. And uh, yeah, man, I'm super excited. I'm very happy to have you here. Obviously, very proud that you're a solar artist and that we finally made this happen for you. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to be here. I mean, I've, I've been a fan of this format coffee with all water with all that. yes <laughs> <laughs> for for a long time and uh finally sitting here is cool yeah I like it. very cool you're always welcome to do a second one whenever you roll through cool. how about that i'll come back awesome sure. marcus everyone. <laughs>